Hi guys! So, I did a little poll on my last video and it was about what you guys wanted me to do next and the number one was a altar space tour. So this is my dresser, which is also my altar space. Now I condensed it recently, just move forward. <laughs> and my friend, you guys should recognize her I think. <laughs> Um, I condensed it recently, so I had, before over here there was a lot of small jars and bottles full of different herbs, but I actually have been pulling away from herbs recently. I say that when I have a bunch of herbs right there, but <laughs> I used to have a good deal more, but I just haven't been using them. I've been much more drawn to going back to crystal work and stuff like that. It's just an origami deer that I did, along with some of my rings that I wear, some rose quartz rings, my singing bowl, and I have a five hole ocarina. Um, hello little bird. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is my most recent setup. Um, some things always stay the same, like this little girl right here, she was originally a little centaur, just a plain white centaur figure, but I painted her and added some twigs, so I hope you can see from the light, and added some twigs actually from an old tomato plant that was in my garden, and they were kind of perfect, but this one keeps falling off, so I always have to adhere it somehow, which is where tape comes in. I've got some different crystals here lovely pieces. Stone that I picked up. I love that one. I think that was hand carved. Another bird figure. Surprise, surprise. I think you guys know by now I like birds. <laughs> I have some of my obsidian. I keep it on my altar because I use it a lot in my gridding. Um, a, oh, I love this selenite palm stone. Look at that. <laughs> I've had this guy for a little while now and I adore it. And my oracle card right now is 11, so crow or raven. Oh yeah, that little girl is that little girl. So this is, I should have said, this is the figure to represent my inner child. So inner child work, um, maiden energy work, youth or imagination type of work. So I keep that figure myself from when I was very young and her on my altar because they're pretty well the same person to me. Um, plants, the little, I hope you can see, it's a little beaver. I found a little beaver figure at a charity shop and I adore it and I just stuck it in with some of my plants. Over this way, sorry if my sweeping makes you dizzy. Um, this is just how I feel it's gonna go. This is where most of my larger pieces are, so I have... And this also won't contain a crystal tour, I suppose. That'll be a different video. This is one of my largest pieces. I love this one. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. Look at that! I love this one. And I like it because it fits perfectly just in my hand, like my thumb goes straight along it. Oh, if a crystal can fit in your hand perfectly, you kind of know it's for you. <laughs> my double pointed clear quartz, some selenite points, citrine, another amethyst cluster. This is the tarot card that I pulled recently and it is the sun card. Um, also known as Dancing with the Sun from the Triple Goddess Tarot. I may link that below if I can find it. I think I will. Um, it's a really beautiful deck though. White Sage, my sister's pieces. My sister's an artist. This is one of her. <laughs> it was a fun painting she did and she calls it Totoro's Garden. And she did it just for me because She's my sister and I love her and because she knows that I adore Totoro. A little jar of feathers. 
recently I've been totally into feathers and I've just been looking for them or they've just been finding me. <laughs> some chamomile, some cedar. Most of these I will use in teas, excluding the feathers obviously, <laughs> but I'll use most of those in teas. My most recent grimoire. I tend to just keep it on here because if something comes to me and I feel inspired, I can just grab it and go. And I'm not really a wand person, but this is the closest thing I have. And it's a, well, actual like selenite wand, but I've adhered some hide on it. I tend to do this more with clearing because selenite's very clearing and cleansing. Got my wooden pendulum. I like wooden pendulums because for me they're very grounding. Hence trees. Um, this is a piece. I have a few of these. I recently went to my friend's cottage and I found a bunch of different crystals and they're all clear quartz, but I found them myself. So it's, I'll just say Ontario clear quartz. I won't say where, but little rose quartz I've been wearing recently. This guy I quite literally got yesterday at a shop. My first spirit quartz. It's citrine, but also half white, half yellow. Beautiful. Some moss agate, a ventrine with crow. Sweeping over. Hi. <laughs> plants, more plants. This. This is my, if I were to have a best friend as a plant, it would be this guy. I call him the professor. <laughs> he has a little deer friend in there as well. And this stone is from British Columbia. I saw it and it's just this beautiful color and it's got stripes. Oh, I still love it. But this is my ficus bonsai. I've had him for almost three years, four years. Actually, probably around the same amount of time that I've been doing crystal work, to be totally honest. Um, but this little guy actually is just like a symbol for me of rebirth and growth. Not only is it a tree, but I had him when I was in college. In my first year, I was bringing him up there, and my dad's truck broke down. And it was in the middle of winter, Canadian winter. Enough said. <laughs> um, and we were just stuck for a little while and this poor guy's roots were just getting so cold and I thought that it was on its last legs. And all the leaves just fell off but it has thrived ever since and I'm so happy because I love this little guy so much. He's so cute and quirky and like, when I look for bonsais or ficus bonsais now, whichever one looks the most interesting, like its structure, Perfect. <laughs> I have a little seashell right there, some stone. This I actually need to fill up again. It's just lavender oil and water with, I don't know if you can see, a couple pieces of just small bits of crystal that have broken off from a couple of my clusters. I have cedar pieces, cedar oil. This I've had forever. I don't know when I started it. I must have been gosh, maybe 11, <laughs> but that's just full of different flowers. Snow water, snow water, snow water. I collect snow water um, more so than rain water, but because I feel like snow water is much more, I suppose, untouched by man or man-made things, so like a roof, because if I, if I were to get it, Rainwater, I mean, if I were to get rainwater, it would probably have little bits of sediment from my roof because that would be the easiest way for me to collect it. But snow water, just if it's untouched snow, then it's quite literally been untouched. And this is my current grid. <laughs> I have a lot of fun with my grids. My grids are very spontaneous. I have some rose quartz. I put this at the beginning. If I did, I tried to film something. If it didn't work out, it wasn't at the beginning. If it did work out, it was at the beginning. <laughs> so like pieces, magnesite, clear quartz, and then with this piece right there. <laughs> it's not actually supposed to be a point, but 
that I balance it so that it is a point. Ametrine, Desert Rose, and this piece, as well as go across the grid. This piece I found in the same area where I found that other larger piece of Ontario quartz. Mm -hmm. I love this grid. I actually put this on my Instagram. If any of you follow me, I'm not sure if any of you do, but I put a picture up on my Instagram and so far I think people seem to like it. I do at least. Yeah, this is my main altar space right now. It's not, it's not messy. It doesn't look like it gets used, but that's just because I keep it tidy because this is also my bedroom, so I won't be showing you everything in this room, only things that are touched by, I guess, witchcraftiness. Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> but because this is my bedroom, I won't be showing you everything, hence, there's a bed. <laughs> And then moving just over, everything in these two drawers are art supplies or stuff that I use for my grimoire. My sob lamp, Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night. He is my absolute favorite artist in the world. I've studied his life and his work a good couple times. Feel very close to the man, almost like I know him. And then in this one, and in this one, I have my crystals. Should I open it? Why not? This is the first one. Now, I keep my crystals semi-organized. If I have those small plastic bags that you get from crystal shops or jewelry and things like that, that's how I'll use them. But I have a good few in here, so I have like moonstone and selenite pieces and then epitite. But I won't go too much into it, because that'll be for another day. It. And then this one I found at a charity shop. It's missing a leg, so I found a coin and just a black stone. And I feel like it's kind of protective as well. It's empty because all the ones in there are on my grid. <laughs> oh yes, and then this is my staff that I made. This comes right off. It's um, leather fake leather, and then a loomed um, Aboriginal native inspire, inspired like loom piece, I suppose. And then that actually just fits perfectly right at the top. And I have three feathers, two morning doves, and then one grackle feather, a little piece of tiger's eye. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Yeah, I'm getting better at this camera. <laughs> Some leather pieces. I think, where is it? Uh, right there. I carved Gemini. Actually, let's get this out. <laughs> oh yeah, yoga mat, bookshelf. That's my coffee. <laughs> ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. I'll go through my bookshelf more in depth, maybe in a different video. But for now, ha ha ha, <laughs> this is my staff. Gemini, because I am a Gemini. Don't focus on the background, focus on my staff. Thank you. Go all the way down, there's some black fake leather. And it's mainly gold, and then going into greens. Again with the two pieces. Well, not pieces, two carved rings. And then red fake leather. Hang on, I need to maneuver this better. There we go red fake leather, and then I have carved moon, and then I have carved oop, sunrise or sunset, that's better, a little bit of red jasper, but yeah, this is my staff. I found this stick just the way it was, well, not just the way it was, but this height, because if you can see, I'm five foot five. This is basically as tall as I am, <laughs> and I just found it on a walk, and I decided, oh, this is brilliant, smashing. So I just brought it home, walked home with it, and then decorated it the way that I wanted to, and it's my staff now, and it works, and it's just perfect. It's got those pieces, and mm, I love this guy.
I don't use it for many things. Sometimes if I'm feeling like I want to do some movement in my practice, if I'm doing a working and I want some movement, I'll use that with it and I'll just kind of, you know, move. <laughs> um, bird postcard. But yeah, this is my altar space. It's really nothing too special, but it's my space right now. I haven't felt the need to display a whole lot recently. More so the most displaying I'll do is with my grids and with just small pieces and crystals everywhere. But no, I've really condensed what's been on my, my altar space. <sighs> oh, why not? I guess my windowsill is kind of like my altar space too. This is one little terrarium I did. Doing quite well. Geode. This is a piece of wood I found that had been gnawed by beavers. I hope you can see it. I know the light's probably hard, but sometimes I light it and use the smoke. We have Athena that my sister brought back from when she went to Greece when she was in high school. Another funky little terrarium. I call this one Treasure Planet because it's a sphere and it's got little coins and stuff. This is Bucephius the War Horse carved out of soapstone with some worry beads, again, from Greece. My sister brought them back. <laughs> my best friend gave this to me, with my plant. We'll always be friends because you know too much, which is very true for her and I. Another plant. And I do origami dragons. This is one that I did in college, and I actually painted the little guy. I wonder if you'll be able to see him if I do this. Like the makeup gurus. Oh, it works! <gasps> Genius! <laughs> Um, I have a little Confucius figure that I found that I painted. I believe it's Confucius. If it's not, let me know. I originally didn't know who it was. I was just really drawn to it. It was white. It was just a piece similar to um, my, I guess, dear child figure. It was just white. And I painted her. I painted him, too. Um. <laughs> This is one of many tiny unicorn eraser pieces that a good friend of mine sent me in a little care package where pen pals are good friends. I talk to her all the time, but she doesn't live in my country, unfortunately, <laughs> but I keep this little guy there because it just reminds me of her and it makes me happy and it's just like, oh, it's a little tiny unicorn. <laughs> Here's a quartz piece. Orchids, beautiful orchids. I put this on my Instagram as well. A lot of my stuff is mainly just nature based, but I got this little guy yesterday. Hmm. Up here is just a dream catcher that I made. <laughs> Fairy lights. Um, actual hide, not actual feathers. Um, real sinew. All of this was, um, you know, nothing was wasted. It was from actual elders. I did an Aboriginal studies course, and one day we made dream catchers. Well guys, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!